the SCJ team, but uh, Alan also wanted to say a few things that need to be said about the state of the world. So Alan, please kick us off. Thanks, Danny. I really appreciate this. I promise you we're going to get to technical SEO. I just need to say this. Okay. See that? Please, everybody, this stuff matters more than you might even realize. There you go. All right. Wow. I kind of have chills, I got to say. All right. So, yes, as promised, we will talk technical SEO because that's why you guys came here. Um, and we're going to try and make it a little bit fun right now because we are 100% live. And some of you may have seen the lead up to this. Uh, but let me let me tell you what you're about to see right now. So welcome to Technical SEO Ass Hattery. Uh, this is sort of like we're going to do a game show style. So I don't know if any of you might have seen the old show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? They used to do this little game called Scenes from a Hat. Um, I'm going to basically take out topics out of a hat, except I don't actually have an, a hat. I have a popcorn bucket, which will be the, <laughs> the source of things today. But it's going to be totally random, so there's no script. This is just going to be a whole bunch of fun. So let me, uh, before we kick off, though, let me introduce who we've got here. So Alan, uh, Alan Blyweiss, please introduce yourself. Tell, me, tell us a little about who you are, what you do. My, hi my high tech slides. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, very little practice, people. Mm hmm Okay. And this is Alan. Alan Blyweiss. Who I am. Mm -hmm. some, some of my clients. Okay. And we're also joined by Jamie Alberico. Jamie, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Bitching to be here, my friend. Uh, I'm a technical SEO, which means I specialize in finding broken things, breaking things, and telling other people things are broken. Absolutely. Okay, so before we kick off, I guess we should define for the people watching, what is SEO ass hattery? So Alan, do you want to maybe tell us, in your opinion, what does the term ass hattery mean when it comes to SEO? <laughs> 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 okay. Very good. Does everybody know about the tip, George? Did you mention that? No, I'm about to. Um, I will get to that in just one second. Jamie, do you want to define? Stealing his <laughs> damn thunder already. We I know. just started this and he got an ass hat. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, technical SEO ass hattery is this land of really good intentions and no technical requirements. Like we have all these teams who want to accomplish great things and then there's this ungodly chasm where things fall in. This is technical ass hattery. It's like a crack in the middle between the teams. That's perfect. All right. So. It's table set now, so let's get to it. Okay, so let's go over how the session will work. So I put, as I've said, I put several topics into my, what was supposed to be an ass hat, but I'm moving, so I packed my hats by accident. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, but I'll, yeah, I'll basically pull out a topic at random, and whoever, they're basically gonna get rewarded for the best rants about this topic. That is uh, something that frustrates us all. Um, and the more creative and entertaining the answer, the more points they will get. Not that the points actually matter in the end, because we're all <laughs> Um, and uh, so, yeah, basically, if they say any naughty words, I'm going to be keeping track um, on my high tech whiteboard here, which Alan is already up to three before we've even officially kicked off the session. Jamie's got one that's partially due to some stuff they said on Twitter before. Um, so, yeah, it, it's going to be good. But the swearing is all for a good cause, guys. Um, yes. Every for every swear that these guys say over the next 30 minutes or so, um, we're donating ten dollars both to uh, Global Giving for COVID relief and also for the Voices for Racial Justice. So um, I hope you'll endure the bad language. It's all for a good cause. 
Uh, and if thank you guys you, have Pure Link, oh sorry, oh, real quick, yeah. thank you yeah. Pure Link for matching my swear jar. Fuck yeah, I appreciate you. Oh, there's one. Okay. All right, and we're off and running. So um, for everybody watching, if you got topics you want them to talk about and rant about, or just questions about technical SEO, feel free to just keep throwing them in the chat window. Uh, we'll try to get as many of those answered as we can as we go along. Um, okay, you, are you ready, players? Ready. All right, here we go. So I'm going into my magical ass hat slash popcorn bucket for our first, and we'll send, send this one to Jamie. For our first one, our topic is when acceptance criteria goes awry. Oh man, and this go. Is a B. <laughs> let's, let's talk about acceptance criteria. Let's talk about the importance of this thing existing in the world entirely. All right, so hypothetically, we are going to play this game and uh, changing the names to protect the innocent. Yeah. So we have this really well-intentioned dev team. They know this page is painfully slow. It's an automotive dealership, hypothetically. Could be lying to you this part of the game right now. Um, they want to make this page faster. So we have the basic content. We have, hey, here are all of the vehicles available in Atlanta. It's beautiful. And then beneath that, we get to scroll. We get to see every car there. We get that important interlinking and connection between that category and the actual products it represents. Well, they go ahead and they uh, they take a very light level conversation and they decide to make the page faster by basically removing all of those vehicles from that category page. So the moral of the story is here, as hattery can happen when you do not go ahead and clarify clearly acceptance criteria like, hey, those vehicles need to exist. The interconnection between them and this category page is what makes that category page viable. Points. Alan, any comments? <laughs> uh -huh. fucking good. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go back to the bucket, and this time, whatever I pull out, Alan, this one's for you. Okay. You missed. You missed. You missed what I said, Denny. You didn't put that on the whiteboard. I said Jamie oh. is fucking good. Oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. Thank you for for fixing that. Okay, Alan, you're up to four. Come on. I'm sorry. I got a lot going on here. This is a high tech operation. I've got my big whiteboard. I got a bucket. Come on, give me some slack. All right. All right, Alan, here's a nice one for you. Signal isolation. Let's talk ass hattery. Signal isolation. Right. So everybody hears, oh, this is a ranking factor. Oh, this isn't a ranking factor, or this is a minor, minor ranking factor. Technical ass hattery happens a lot because people fixate on any one signal and they don't mm -hmm. grasp that multiple signals interact with each other, right? So it's like saying you've got paid speed, right? All right, good. Paid speed matters. So let's go ahead and fix paid speed, right? Yeah, that's wonderful. But look where Google is going with paid speed now. It's getting granular for the different signals that matter to speed, and it's not just this one number, right? It's the content, you know, content full point. It's the uh, the um, time to interact. Oh, with yeah, numbers. let's talk about that, that total blocking time. It's new and it's beautiful and it measures it down to the tasks. Right, and so it, that's a great way to take that concept, right? Take that concept of page speed, where we mm -hmm. know it's multiple signals and apply that to other factors of SEO, right? Mm -hmm. What is crawl budget, right? Crawl budget is, well, A, it's just how many pages they can crawl. Well, yeah, guess what? If you've got 85,000 links on a single page, part of the crawl budget is how many links they're gonna crawl on a single page, right? Mm -hmm. Here's another thing to consider. It's layer upon layer upon layer. One of the biggest problems that causes ass hattery is oversimplification of concepts and failing <laughs> the picture. Mm -hmm. People need to wake up, pause, slow their asses down, and think, what else do I need to consider for this thing? That's so important, and too many people forget that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Points. Points to Elm Blyways. All right. So we're going back to the bucket. We're going to start on our next topic. This one we'll send over to Jamie. And what have we got Boy, for you? Right? What have we got for you, Jamie? Bot managers and friendly fire. And oh, go. I <laughs> uh, clarification. I I believe this is actually called fuck your query parameters. 
Okay. Oh, no, wait, it's not. It's a different one, but we can that still put that on the board. So uh, <laughs> bot managers are great. You've got a large site. You are using um, you know, forms that collect personal information, correct credit cards. You probably have a bot management system in place because it keeps you safe. It keeps your customers safe. Uh, thing is, so your well-intended list of like, these are the behaviors in which I put you in timeout. These are the behaviors in which I don't allow you to do anything. They don't know about the whitelist. In most major bot management platforms, you have a whitelist and you have a trigger threshold list. So if your site suddenly is getting real healthy because you worked real hard and getting that crawl budget, right? And Google's suddenly crawling a whole bunch. If it hits that trigger threshold, you have accidentally tar-pitted Googlebot. And this is a fun conversation in a hypothetical world where I had to sit down with the uh, client manager from this CDN DDoS management service. And he's like, we would never block Googlebot. And I'm like, yeah, I know you wouldn't do it intentionally. But you have to get into the server logs. You have to get into those bot management logs. It's really important to uh, combat as Hattery to have and it's already a battle to get our base server uh, server logs in place. But if 70% of your hits are coming from an edge node, you need to know what's going on there. As a tech SEO, try and be involved. You're not asking for the keys to the kingdom. You're asking to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. Points to Jamie Alberico. Very impressive. All right. We are Points gonna... to Danny Goodwin for getting my name right. Oh, yeah. What's this high quality? It's a high quality opportunity. Because he knows how to say your name right. Was there a swear word in there? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I see your head go forward. All right, that's one for each of you. That's it. All right, Alan's leading five to four for those playing at home. When, 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 when I lose my head forward, <laughs> like, oh, wake up. Damn it, I have to catch up. <laughs> All right, Alan, I've pulled one from the hat. And let, oh, this is going to be a good one for you. SERP case studies by tool providers. <laughs> Brace yourselves, people. <laughs> Fuck do I start with <laughs> Tools are great in this industry. Mm -hmm. I love the hell out of them, okay? They have their place. Tool providers love to come out with case studies based on all this data they have access to. Or they allow somebody who writes for them to come up with a post related to the latest ranking factors based on this or that. Claiming that direct traffic is a ranking signal is a fucking joke. Boom. Claiming, that page, speed, claiming that page speed doesn't matter for SEO is a fucking lie. The fact that tool providers are as good as they are for the work that they do and the tools they provide does not give them the authority to publish garbage data with bullshit claims that fuck up people's heads. Mm -hmm. The fact that people in our industry rely on them gives them a responsibility to be fucking real with what they're communicating. The fact that people in our industry who are new, who are young, who don't have the kind of knowledge necessary to evaluate truth, rely on these tool providers for guidance on making serious real world decisions about businesses. Where these tool providers come out with these bullshit studies, it's fucked up. It's exploitative. You're right. Absolutely. It's absolutely exploitative. It's mm -hmm. deceitful. It's manipulative. And it needs to stop. You want to come out with a case study? Be honest when you post it. We don't know if these are fucking ranking signals or not. Mm -hmm. Don't make a claim that they are. You want to say these are observations we made? Great. I got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. State your but methodology. You State your steps. These are fucking signals. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. And with that, wow, Alan, you've jumped out to a very far lead, but we thank you for your generosity <laughs> of contributing to our swear jar, which is going to two very good causes, COVID relief and also for racial justice. So thank you.
All right. Um, hard, hard to top that one, but um, let's try. All right. Up next. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, here's one for you. Always check the documentation. <laughs> hey guys, you want to hear a story about how I really was an asset? Because it's fucking brilliant. God damn, it's brilliant. Um, so this one time I had a, a really lovely say and we were migrating to secure. We were migrating to secure. We were setting one preferred version of the domain. So no more resolution at dubs and non-dubs, no resolution at HTTP and non HTTP. We had proper 301s in place. And I thought I would be very helpful to Googlebot in understanding technical signals by going in and using the URL removal tool to get rid of these versions I no longer wanted. Well, when you use this tool, as the folks I think at LinkedIn just found out recently, uh, if that redirects, it goes to whatever it redirects to. And that is a little bit problematic. Mm -hmm. So this involves me going into a shitstorm of a panic. I am, I am damned and desperate. I submit every site map over again. I remove that URL uh, request, URL removal request. I remove the removal. Yes. <sighs> uh, get everything back up and go and calculate how much traffic I've, I've probably lost this company in a single day by this silly, silly mistake because I index most of the 70,000 products for a good couple of hours. And by the time my boss called me back, I'm, I'm panting because I have so much anxious energy of my ass hattery, of my damn foolery that I have run about five miles. And I'm panting deeply explaining. I will send you an email with the full documentation so we can moratorium. <sighs> I fucked up. It happens. I learned. Mm -hmm. Always check the documentation. Some tools are a little bit more tricky than we suspect. They hide things in nooks and crannies, and no one really likes that shit storm surprise. All right. Um, before we continue, we have had a couple of uh, questions from our attendees, so I figure we'll, we'll throw those in right now since we're about halfway through our session, so it's not all all ranting. Um, first question was... Uh, Bitching. How about, a, is there a good log analyzer tool? Because we were talking tools. Uh, do you guys have one you would recommend? Log I have many thoughts on this. Hey. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't use log analyzers. The majority of the clients that I work with are Fortune 500 scale or very large enterprise. Mm -hmm. right? We're talking about millions or tens of millions of pages mm -hmm. and get millions of visitors a, a week or a day. And if there's a need to analyze the logs in there, I leave that to their in-house team. Mm -hmm. My specialty is the audit, right? The strategic audit. So I look at the highest level sure. and I can provide guidance on what they need to look for when they're looking in the logs. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't personally use them for the situation I'm in. And, mm -hmm. and most of them won't even give me access anyway because of mm -hmm. sensor concerns about sensitivity of corporate information, which is mm -hmm. hilarious. But... Fuck it. I don't have to bother. All right. Your thoughts? All right. The best one for the job is the one the devs are already using. I understand it may be really tempting to go get something as promising you plug and play beautiful visuals. That's not how it works. Every single piece needs to be remapped over to a new setup. It is far easier for you to go ahead and sit down with someone on that team and learn how to make a simple call. It's very much like SQL. There are tools out there. There is a great talk about by Dominic Woodman um, on how to do this. Use what's available. Don't put extra friction in place. And if you find that by learning this little bit, you gain a lot of information, you gain good insights, you're able to make a change, then you have a proof of concept to make a case for the investment of plugging and playing. But until then, learn. Adapt to the team you're with. Less friction, more happy time. Uh, shit, damn, balls. <laughs> I think two of those counted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll do one other quick question. I, I, I can't not ask this question considering what the session is all about. Ryan Jones, uh, thank you for this question. This may be the best question ever. Okay, well, if swearing counts, then my question for Alan is, what's the biggest fucking horseshit, dumbass, fucking <laughs> ass backward thing you've ever fucking seen? And... <laughs> And I'll split the all the square words in that between you two equally since I asked it. Do I name and shame or do I go anonymous? Hey, we're oh. we're changing names to protect the pseudo innocent. Yes, go anonymous. You are. I didn't fucking swear to that. <laughs> <laughs> you do Your you choice. go. 
<laughs> don't get us sued. That's all I ask. <laughs> uh, I don't think the NDA covered my saying this. <laughs> Guys, Nashable, we're going to find out right. some really Nashable, exciting things right now. Nashable used to be a really big website. And a few years back, they switched design. And they brought me on board after they relaunched with the new design. That was the time when I was brought in to do SEO evaluations, not beforehand. They swore. Fuck, they swore. We only changed the presentation layer because I asked them when I was hired, what did you do different? So I can know before and after. And I'm like, oh, it was all presentation layer. Well, some douche hat. <laughs> can that decided, count? That, that counts now, right? That, yeah. For creativity, absolutely. Decided that presentation layer was to go to infinite scroll which it was, except with infinite scroll, each scroll trigger point did not trigger a new URL and new title and new H1. So millions of pages disappeared from Google <laughs> because they activated infinite scroll without considering the impact on SEO. Because it was just presentation layer. I don't know who the fucking hell thinks of these things. <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't pause to consider outside of their little fucking world what something they do on a technical level might cause where then I get called in afterwards to do an audit and I'm like, yeah, this is a problem. Now, the truth is, for whatever reason, they didn't fix any of the things I found wrong in the major aspects. And this is just one example in that audit. They chose not to fix the things I recommended in the audit. Now they're one of the smallest freaking technical websites on earth. Congratulations. <laughs> Technical SEO matters. Mm -hmm. Get your web developers to pause before they fucking decide what they're going to fucking do and test it on a goddamn staging server, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, please, please. Can we just have a fucking staging server? Like knowing what the shit actually does as opposed to hypothetically this shit does this shit would make everyone's life so much better. Get your tech SEOs in that QA. We want to love you. Let us love you. Fuck yeah. Awesome. I beg them to let me participate in QA during staging. Mm -hmm. And client after client, for whatever reason, comes to me six, six months later. And they're like, we made the changes you recommended, but we're not seeing any movement. And I take three minutes to do an evaluation <laughs> just on the surface to see 80% of the things I recommend weren't done. But when they do make changes and they don't do it on a staging server and properly test it on their own, mm -hmm. it's, oh, my God, who the hell doesn't do their own QA testing? Most of the developers I've dealt with. This is how you trigger a, a nightmare in my mind. You say, we'll test and prod. Fuck no. Not today, Satan. <laughs> no. Especially when you're dealing in development sprints. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then it's like, oh, Alan came in afterwards and found a problem. We have to wait to the next sprint to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to do a hot fix and muck up the entire channel of releases, because if it's Danny, enterprise Danny, and there's multiple Danny, going. Danny, you can count yes. this as one curse or two. Okay. But here's what I say to them. Yes. <laughs> that's two. <laughs> okay. All right. Because that's the arrogance that they go with in this stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to be there to help them. I want to be there to be be helpful and guide them based on the fact that they know what they're doing from a web development perspective. They don't understand the true impact of SEO. Mm -hmm. I know enough about development to talk intelligently with them about it and respectfully if they allow me to participate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
All oh. right. Well, I'm He's sure we I'm, I'm, let us love you. I know. Uh, so I blame Ryan Jones for all of that. So thank you, Ryan. Uh, we're run oh man, we only got five minutes left. So um, we've done a lot of talking about the ass hattery. Since we're approaching the end, uh, let's talk best outcomes. So Alan, Jamie, what can we do to ensure the best outcomes for technical SEO and we can avoid all this ass hattery? Mm, I'm going to go with clear user stories and acceptance criteria, my friend. So as the goddamn technical SEO, I want you a fucking SEO in-house to write acceptance criteria in order to let the devs know what it is you actually want. But you can't say, make magic. There are technical changes. Code does things. I want this script to do this script to do this. Mm -hmm. Acceptance criteria is you going through and going, if fuck, then shit. It's great. Get that AC on. That is the best algebra problem I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> Alan, good luck topping that, but go ahead. What would be some of your top tips for people uh, as we as we sort of go off into the sunset here? Don't make major SEO decisions on throwaway claims by fucking asshats. Mm-hmm. You gotta test. wait it. How big is that change? If it's huge test. and it's a bullshit claim? Test on a staging server before you fucking go live. Mm -hmm. Test after you launch the fucking site. Mm -hmm. And then give some time for accumulated data and test again and look at the data. It's okay to get consensus. Get measurement. Of, Devs love measurement. We love measurement. Fuck yeah, measurement. Mm -hmm. if, but if all of the people that are doing the consensus are just talking out of their ass, you're going to be fucking screwed most of the time. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, what else? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. more. I mean, we can go on, right? Uh, yeah, you have a couple more minutes. And for those playing at home, by the way, just as an update. So let's see. Fuck. 30, 30 for Alan so far. And 15, 15, 20, oh, that would be now 29 for Jamie. Wow, this is a close one. Oh, fucking hate it. <laughs> fucking shit, Alan. Stop it. God damn it. Fuck shit. Oh. I'm fucking sorry, fucking and I love you all. I don't have energy. Remember, all the swearing is for a good cause. It's for racial justice. It's for COVID relief. Have, for having have, fun. The courage, have the courage to assess your own data, mm -hmm. please. Yes. Understand that one signal relates to five other signals. The metal robot. a good rapport you understand better you make better decisions and you collaborate so we all get better awesome. and one last thing yep
when I see it, mm -hmm. right? So if you're going to take my attitude and how you communicate the bullshit, make sure you have the attitude of respectfulness and empathy when you're going to look to help human beings. Absolutely. All right. Well, we are out of time. The final tally, Jamie, you came in 30, which is at $10 a pop, 300 bucks for those. And I get a match. Areas. Thank you, Link. Pure yep. Link. Thank you. And Pure Link is matching that. And Alan squeaked ahead right at the end uh, for <laughs> 33. So, Alan, you're a winner. Congratulations on being our asshat. Best asshat of the day. What a great title. <laughs> All right, we crown guys. you. It's awkward. <laughs> That's all the time we Thank have. Uh, thanks to Alan, Jamie. You were awesome. I hope everybody had a lot of fun. This was supposed to be all in good fun, uh, and now we got to go elsewhere. So thanks to everybody for the questions. Sorry we couldn't get to more, but uh, it was just 30 minutes. So I'm going to hand it over now to our CEO, Janice. Uh, she's going to introduce our next great keynote speaker, Anne Handley. So stay tuned for that.